Hi everyone, Timmy Merman Johnson here, founder of Mr. Money Jar and National Numeracy Ambassador. So for this year's National Numeracy Day, I'm joined by two special guests uh, who will introduce themselves in just a second. And we're going to be talking about the role of everyday numeracy from a cultural perspective. I think we're going to have a very uh, insightful conversation today and I, I can't wait to see what we come up with. Um, but first I'm going to ask our guests to introduce ourselves. So starting with Bola, if you could introduce yourself, please. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Bola Sol. I am a finance coach and author of How to Save It. Um, I have been talking about finance now for eight years. I studied mathematics and finance at uni and I just felt that the conversation needed to go on. And so I continued it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for joining, Bola. And Tayo? Thanks, Timmy. So uh, my name is Tayo Huntonade. I'm the co-founder of a platform called Bricks with Tips. Um, which is uh, aimed to bridge the property gap using education. Um, I've got a background in finance as well. I did um, economics in university and I've been in the property and finance space for um, maybe about seven, eight years now. Very good. So if we could dive straight in. So we all work within the finance space at the moment, which means that I'm, I'm assuming that we all use uh, maths and numbers on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that's through posting content, through um, like property, personal finance, and so on. Um, and I just wanted to start with staying with you, Tayo. Like, what is your earliest maths memory, if I could call it that? <laughs> I'd say that my earliest maths memory, probably when I was really, really young. I, I think I remember being as a, a kid. Um, I used to love playing with the abacus. I don't know why right <laughs> and then um i remember the day that i actually realized that it's not a toy that it's meant to use you're meant to use it to help you count if that kind of makes sense and i, and I think that's really interesting because um it kind of embodies maths as a whole right sometimes you learn the fundamentals of it and you're not sure how you're supposed to apply it until later on in life but then it becomes really useful if that kind of makes sense but yeah that's my earliest memory okay the abacus and, and bola what's your earliest math memory Honestly, so my two brothers are older than me by quite a bit. So my earliest memory is um, cleaning their room and being told that whatever coins I find, I could keep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, sometimes they were, sometimes they didn't look after their coins properly, but I found them. <laughs> it's really interesting you mentioned that one, Bola, because my earliest um, memory is around like saving one piece and two piece into like I wish it was a money jar but it wasn't but it was in like those giant five litre aqua pura bottles and then when we filled the bottle all the way we're allowed to then take it to the post office or to a coin star machine and then like turn that into money that we could use to buy stuff and then like staying with that how much of an influence Bola would you say your parents um, had on like you studying maths you being interested in it and, and so on honestly not a lot um my mother wanted me to be a pharmacist <laughs> so um my oldest brother is an accountant by qualification first and then my then my sister became a, an engineer my sister became a doctor so as everybody became something that was very different and at one point I wanted to be an accountant. My mom thought, who wants to have two kids who are accountants? And I was like, well, I'm not really concerned about what you want. I really like numbers. <laughs> so this is what I'm gonna study because this is what I'm naturally good at. Okay, cool. Um, and and Tayo, same question. Like how much of an influence did your parents have? Um, I think they had um, quite, a, quite a big influence. Um, I wouldn't say particularly to maths. I think uh, growing up with two Nigerian parents, um, you gotta read your book as they say and that covers studying all subjects as a whole so I think that <laughs> everything you have to be good at everything you have to take extra attention to everything so I think um as a whole that kind of put me on maths um so I think that, that they, they had the influence that got me it made sure that I looked after maths because I guess in the UK the big things are science maths and English right so I always paid uh, particular attention to those three Okay, I'm actually really glad that I asked you both because, like, Bola, you said that it was kind of, you you had more of a say in the decision, but Tayo, you said that, um, like, your parents had quite a big influence. I was just going to assume that all three of us having a similar heritage, that it would come down from the parents because 
my experience of my parents, and I know that they did this with love, was like, if I did an exam, it could be a maths exam, it could be an English exam, and I got like 99 out of 100, the immediate thing would be, well, why didn't you get 100 out of 100? Like academia, doing well at school, getting A's and stuff, there was a big, big emphasis on that. And so I feel like my parents had quite a big influence. And I, I just remember, you know, doing like Hayden Richards books and kind of stuff outside of school when I was younger too. Um, so we've looked at our parents' relationship with maths. Um, how would you say your attitude towards mass and numbers has changed over the course of your your life then did you manage to did you stay in love with it or did you kind of fall out of love with it and then get older and then realize you know what this is a skill i actually really need to be able to navigate the day-to-day -day and my job and my profession um tile yeah i think for myself when it came to studying maths in school and uh, particularly secondary school um, a funny thing about maths, right? When it's going well, it's going excellent, isn't it? Um, and I think that goes for maths particularly because maths, you solve it, right? Um, if I give an example, I did economics in university and economics, you don't really need to come to any kind of conclusion, right? But um, numbers are binary. And I, I think that if you are, if maths is going well for you, you kind of enjoy that. You kind of enjoy going through it, solving it, and you've come to your answer, which is a solid number. And there's no other answer it's just that number and sometimes that allowed me to enjoy maths i think um going forward into life um if i speak about secondary school and things like that yes i was one of those guys that um sold sweets and drinks on in the playground but it's funny how being good at maths helps you um navigate that as well i always give an example and say that um i used to sell canned drinks canned drinks were big ticket items right they had a decent profit you'd make like 50, 70p on each can. However, you could only carry a certain amount of canned drinks into school. Another um, another Nigerian saying is I can't kill myself, which means that you want to achieve the goal, right? But you can't like, I can't carry 30 cans into school or 40 cans into school to do that. So um, I moved to smaller ticket items like sweets and stuff like that, which would only make 20p per item, but I can bring way more into school off the back of that. And at the time, you don't realise that maths influences your decisions to make those business decisions, should I say, as a 15-year-old or 14-year-old. But maths does play a part there. And then I think going further into life in my career, I had um, a uh, about a five, six-year career in banking, in investment banking. Um, definitely maths helps you there. I think that um, even though we tend to use calculators, um, you need to be guided and have those fundamentals anyway to be able to... You need to be able to say that number doesn't look right. <laughs> And it's the fundamentals that you learn in school and onwards that allows you to say that, you know what, that number doesn't look right. I need to go through this again and make sure or am I missing a number here or there. So um, I think that my relationship with um, with maths is that um, the foundations needed to be built. And I'm happy that they were built because it helps you in so many different areas, even in a social setting. setting and I'm arguing with my friends for a laugh. I'll be like, um, I use probability a lot. So I'll say, what are the chances that out of the 220 starters in the Premier League, that blah, 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 blah. I, I do stuff like that all the time. And maths is the foundation of it. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. It's interesting to hear about your background. I didn't actually know you had that banking and uh, investment banking um, background. That's, that's really cool to know. Um, Bola, how about you? How's your uh, attitude to like maths and numbers changed um, from childhood to, to adulthood? So growing up, especially being in like secondary school, college and uni and understanding maths more, I realised how much you can use maths in everyday things. So that's where I learned about algorithms and how it's connected to maths. I learned that the tube map in London was created as a result of maths and algorithms. So for me, it was it was always very interesting to see how far maths actually goes. And I still use maths in my everyday, in my day to day, in my job. Um, it's very important. But funny enough, based on what Tayo said, I also use maths in social settings. So when it was my friend's birthday, we went to a really nice restaurant and at the end of it we all had to pay a certain amount and i don't know what it was but i guess it's just me having a maths brain i said i asked the waiter to check back how much we paid and we paid 81 pounds too much 
and in the end they had to give us a small refund and they all said what made you check and I just said I don't know it's just it's sometimes it's really hard to describe why my brain works the way it does but I'm glad it does because there are times when it saves me money just like in that situation <laughs> yeah yeah um I uh it sounds like math has been almost a constant in in your life from when you were both children to when you um, become adults for me I actually fell out of a relationship with maths I would say in my adolescent years so I was really kind of into it when I was a child in a um, primary school and then I had that moment in secondary school where there was like a lesson where I kind of missed out on a concept and then I fell behind and then it wasn't until I started working again um, almost I used to work in uh, PR and marketing and I was on the research team and there was a lot of spreadsheets and stuff until I had to use it for my job that I came um, back into to liking it so I guess there's a good lesson there in the sense that just because you don't necessarily um, understand something as a child doesn't mean that you can't then catch up with it later on as an adult um, so we talked about like our parents influence on, on us our childhood experiences and then how those experiences have evolved into adulthood and my next question is going to be around like us potentially as parents or with the young people that we interact with um, in our lives how much of an influence do we want to have on them and um, when it comes to what they learn and do we feel that like culture has got anything to to do with that if that makes sense. Bola, I'll start with you. I've been around kids who don't really like maths, but feel very ashamed to say they don't like it because they feel they're not good at it. And I feel from a cultural perspective, at times there's a lot of shame in admitting that there's something you're not good at or there's something you don't understand because you're always supposed to understand things. But as an adult, it makes you... It makes you normal to say you don't have all of the answers, but as a kid, it's an issue. And I don't want that to be an issue for the next generation coming up and all the other generations. I want maths to be a place where even if you say, listen, I don't get this, we go again, um, because it's such an important life skill to know maths and to know how to use it in different environments. So I just say one of the things we need to let go is like the stigma of shame to just say, I don't understand this. Can someone help me? Tayo, do you agree? Do you feel like there's almost a stigma of shame and should people be able to almost acknowledge that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, I, I really want to echo what Bonner said. I think what she said is really, really good. I think that um, um, especially with maths in particular, it is it can be difficult. And I, I think in our culture, there, there can be that stigma of shame. Um, I think it's up to us to take what is in our culture, not necessarily that they're bad things, but basically just tweak it and make it more open. So if I speak about our culture, right, everybody knows the saying, right, um, the person who got A in maths, they don't have two heads. To break it down to everyone, what that means is that they don't have two brains, right? They've got one brain like all of us, right? And there are some good and bad connotations to that, right? You can look at it in one way, which is that um, you're being compared to someone else, you're being put down to someone else. But you can also look at another light and, and say what they're trying to sell, say to you is that you can achieve anything you put your, your mind to, basically. And I think that's a much nicer message. And it, I think it's just up to us as the next generation to make sure that that side of the message is being relayed and just letting people know that, look, we know it's difficult, um, but sometimes your superpower can be uh, being open and saying that, you know, what, I do need help with this. And that help can be given and you can improve um, at maths. So, yeah. That's basically it from my side. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear that that's what you used to get. My mum used to say to me, do they have five heads? Um, that, that was the... <laughs> that's what I grew up with. And it, it's actually... Yeah, it's, it's, a great, it's a great lesson though, because essentially you weren't allowed to ever get away with explaining away someone else's success um, as some sort of innate talent. And I think that that was a really good um, lesson to learn as a child, that if someone else has achieved something, it's not because they're better than you, they just put in more practice, more hours or something, and it instills a good work ethic. Um, I just have one more question for you both, and then we can wrap this up. And it's just around the topicality of numeracy and maths in the UK at the moment. Um, 
yeah, like the PM has said that um, he wants people to be learning maths on, up until the age of, of 18. Um, I happen to think that that's quite a laudable goal. Um, just wondered what your thoughts were on that and how we go about achieving that, like really practical, just kind of actionable ways we can achieve that. I'll start with you, Ty. Um, I, I, I did maths in um, A-level, right? <laughs> A-level maths and GCSC maths is different. It's very, very different. Um, to to the question, I think we would. I, will, I think we would achieve more success changing the attitude around maths as it is to sixteen at the moment. I don't think that sixteen to eight. I think that sixteen to eighteen, especially is a maths purpose, personally. I think that if we could improve the the level of maths that's being taught up to 16 and improve the attitudes around it. So I think one of the things that people really need to understand or one of the, the teaching skills that needs to be added to maths at the moment is just to let people know that, you know what, this isn't just numbers, that this is going to um, impact you or um, help you in life in this place, in budgeting, in um, your finances, in saving, in when it comes to borrowing, whatever it may be. I think that uh, people are getting to 21 years old, 22 years old, and they're thinking, hey, do you know what? This is what they were trying to teach me back then. But I didn't actually know it was le- it was linked to handling my money or my finances or whatever it may be. Um, and the reason why I say that is that a- a- AS level, A level, that was crazy. It's crazy. It was crazy for me. So I just think that at that level, is that what is required? Um, so yeah, that's just personally my take it on it. Um, it may be different to you guys' take. Yeah, thank you, Tyle. What's your take, brother? Back in what Tyle said, people need to see the relevance of it in their everyday life. And once it's applied, there are things that you are more willing to pay attention to when you know how it's going to benefit you and benefit your future. Because there are a lot of people who put off things like budgeting, um, until maybe they have a child and now they really need to think about numbers um, because it's not just about your life it's about someone else's and we shouldn't have to wait to get to that moment to realize this is really important that I understand maths and how things work so I think um, once people see more real life examples do you know what I think younger the younger generation should learn this till they're 18. Yeah, listening to what you both said, and I'm not saying this as a cop-out kind of response, I I agree with both of you, I think it's spot on. I think that what the conversation around maths is showing is that we no longer have the luxury of learning about abstract concepts in any subject anymore because there are simply too many data points being generated. Like there's more stuff to learn than there are hours in the day to learn it. So the message that's coming through loud and clear is that if we're gonna be teaching stuff to people, it needs to be applicable to their day-to-day life. They need to be able to take those numbers and improve their life in some sort of material way at the point of their life that they're in. Because if we can't do that, we're not going to be able to hold their interest and it'll just sort of be a, you know, um, a wasted, a wasted exercise. So, yeah, it was great to hear both your opinions on that because the conversation is quite live at the moment. Yeah, before we wrap up, then any final remarks um, from the two of you Um, before we say goodbye to everyone? Um, Well, let's start with you. (laughs) If you don't understand something when it comes to maths, when it comes to money, just say so. It's not the end of the world if you don't get certain things. Trust me, I am not good with science all the time. <laughs> but I, I I own up to the fact that I don't know everything. But what I do know, I share. And if we all learn to do that as a community, we will all be better off. Thank you, brother. Well said. And Tayo, any last words? Yeah, what, what I'll say is just expand on what I said. Asking is a, is a, is a, is a superpower. I think that um, I learned that uh, relatively, relatively uh, late in life. I wouldn't say that late, but I learned that in my early 20s. Um, I think if you were uh, 15, 16 or anyone older than that, any age, I think just being um, real with yourself and asking as soon as possible. There's someone out there that knows more, right? Um, even like professors in university, they may ask someone something from time to time. So there's no shame in asking for help. Um, and it's even just a way to just better yourself even quicker. You don't want to spend years not knowing and then finally asking when you could have learned that years prior so yeah that's my final take and that that goes for maths for sure 
Awesome stuff. So yeah, we've had some stuff there around like not feeling ashamed to ask for help and actually asking for help being a superpower. And I'll just drop something in because I know that this is something we are big on at National Numeracy is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with using tools either. So whether that's spreadsheets, calculators, um, when it comes to money like budgeting apps, all of these tools exist to help you to use numbers in a more effective way. Um, so that brings us to the end of the conversation. Thank you so much, Paula and Taya, for joining us for the Big Number Nata this year. And um, yeah, I'll catch you both on the next one.